Charts played by James Fox is a violent London-based gangster who follows his own rules. The character is quite the wild card in his methods as he spends time extorting, intimidating and assaulting his victims to get exactly what he wants. From shaving the head of a chauffeur to send a message to their boss, to confronting someone in the street with incredibly stern words. The beginning of Nicholas Rogue's and Donald Camel's film gives the impression of a post-free love urban gritty British crime drama not dissimilar to Frank Rodham's cult The Who inspired Quadrophenia, following the genre convention fairly closely with only a few clues of unconventional undercurrents, such as the less cohesive editing style, a style prominent in many of Nicholas Rogue's films, and elements of sound design utilising subtle yet clear humming and ringing drones. However, as Chaz returns home to his apartment invaded by rivals who vandalise his home and assault him, Chaz, in self-defence, shoots each of his intruders, forcing him to go into hiding away from his rivals and his allies. Overhearing of a room available for renting at a nearby building while sitting within a cafe, Chaz inquires further to find a location where he can lay low and potentially hide underneath a new persona. Once finding residency there, the film takes a turning point, a point of no return from British gritty crime drama down a rabbit hole of dizzying surrealism that, on initial viewings, may even test the viewer's patience. The building's landlord is Mr. Turner, performed by the Rolling Stones' Mick Jagger, an ex-musician who seeks to reconnect with his love for music while also embracing the intensity of a bohemian lifestyle, sex, drugs and rock and roll. Mr. Turner even encourages Chaz's new persona, a supposed artist and street performer, to embrace everything bohemian if he wishes to stay living under his roof. With Mick Jagger's performance as Mr. Turner, the film takes surprising musical turns from a minimalist performance on a guitar, singing a blues jam, to a surreal sequence where Mick Jagger takes the form of a gangster mob boss as he sings, scowls and barks through a rock and roll musical number that wouldn't be out of place from a Rolling Stones record. These moments can feel dizzying and jarring, alongside the unconventional editing style found within performance, but allowing the film's imagery and sequences to wash over the viewer passively, encouraging the viewer to embrace the bohemian at its most extreme and challenging, is a significant focus for Rogue's and Camel's film. In conclusion, Performance is a film that initially styles itself after British gritty crime dramas, but gradually delves further into British surrealism and bohemian experimentalism. Although the film may be a difficult one to watch on a first viewing, with any semblance of a conventional three-act structure narrative lost and not to be found again past the film's 20-minute mark. However, it offers a distinctively memorable viewing experience that sets the standard for surrealist 1970s British cinema to follow afterwards, an impressive feat from the directorial debut of Nicholas Rogue, a master of this particular movement. For novelty's sake, the film offers an exciting unique selling point with Mick Jagger providing a central performance, but delving further into the film allows appreciation and exploration of the fluidity of what genre means, as it transitions from a conventional and recognisable crime drama to an unrecognisably peculiar spark of experimental filmmaking.